Hello and welcome to Vinsloop Academy. In this course we'll be looking into Splunk and how to use Splunk for beginners. So we'll get a basic introduction to Splunk and what it is and how we can install it on a virtual machine and then how to navigate around it and get to use all its features to analyze and collect data. So first of all, what is Splunk? Well, Splunk is a company specializing in data use and processing. So what Splunk basically does is that it collects data and aggregate it and process it in order for us to get a better understanding of what we are seeing in our environments. And this especially counts for logging. So for example, when you have firewalls, all the traffic in the firewalls generate a lot of data and it can be very hard to filter through it all manually, but Splunk utilizes a very easy way for us to index this data and then search in the indexes afterwards. And you can also in Splunk add different components to make some of this analysis machine learning driven such that it can do it for you. So in this video, we'll be looking into Splunk products and resources. We'll be looking at parts of Splunk. And then lastly, we'll be setting up Splunk using a virtual machine in Kali Linux. So Splunk products and re resources. There are four different core components in Splunk. They have the Splunk Free, Splunk Lite, Splunk Enterprise and Splunk Cloud. And then they have specialty focuses in the Splunk Enterprise Security, User Behavior Analysis, IT Service Intelligence, Insight for Infrastructure and Amazon Web Service Cloud Monitoring and inside for ransomware and for industrial IoT and a lot more. And if you navigate to the website, which we will do in one second, we can see these components and some of the things that you can do on the website, because on the website, they also have a very active community answering questions such that you can go on their forum and find answers to maybe some of the problems that you will be facing once you start to use Splunk yourself. So let's head over there and see what you can use the web page and forum to. So here we are at the homepage splunk.com where you can read all about the different products that they have in their product line. So you can, for example, go here into explore and then you can see the core and some of the different stuff that you can add and what they are specialized in. So for example, we can go into the inside for Amazon Web Service Cloud. And let's see if that will load. And here you can, first of all, download a free trial. You can also watch a demo of this particular product and you can read some more about it. But the real nice thing about their websites, besides that you can look up what kind of product they have, is that you can benefit from their resources and documentation. So for example, if you are interested in reading the documentation for the product that you're using, you can go down here to documentation and then you can find and choose the product that you are using. So for example, on the core product, we can click more here and let's say we want to see Splunk Lite. Then we enter this and then you will see the getting started manual and some other stuff. But if you choose a more comprised product, for example, the enterprise, you will see that you can see how to deploy it, you can see how to add data, and there is a lot of stuff here. But what you will also find on the website is the, let's see, is the community the Splunk answers here. So if you go here, you will see their forum where people can ask questions and get answers from the community or from Splunk uh, employees themselves. And as you see here, this is a very active community. For example, we have here a comment 45 seconds ago, one minute, 17 minutes. So asking questions here or looking for answers is a really good thing because there is a high possibility that someone else has had a problem before you or asked the question of how to do some kind of stuff and that someone has actually answered it. Because as you see here, there is a lot of answers for each of these uh, threads right here. And since it is so active, there is a high possibility that if you find a new area with a new question that nobody has answered yet, 
that someone will look into it this rather quickly because for example here I'm on page 5 and page 5 was answered yesterday so this means that from yesterday and until now there has been five entire pages of questions and answers so this is really nice about the Splunk community so now that we have seen where you can get documentation and answers on your question let's head back to the slide and get started with setting up our Splunk environment so now that we have seen the Splunk homepage and where you can find the forum for support, we will be looking at parts of Splunk. So in Splunk, they have the data pipeline, which consists of input, parsing, indexing, and searching. So the data input is where we have our forwarders, which we also will learn how to install in this course. And basically what they do is to take the data that is coming in, so the data input, and that could be from, for example, firewalls, they can be from different network devices. It could also be for login requests sent to our application, or basically anything that is going on backend on our applications or on our devices. Our data input in, is then forwarded to our parsers, where it is getting parsed, meaning that it will ha be added with timestamp, there will be some metadata added to it, and <clears throat> there will be done a lot of processing here before it gets into the different indexes. So our index is a way for us that we can uh, index the different data that we get in. So our index could, for example, be the firewall logs that we have in one index. So we'll take all the data coming from our firewall and collect them all into one index such that our employees who is responsible for the firewalls will only have to look in that particular index when he when he's searching instead of having to look at the data that is coming in from our entire application suite. So you can divide your data into different indexes in order for it to be searched more efficiently. And the last part here is of course the search. And here Splunk presents a very nice user interface where you can type in different search queries similar to when you're using Google and then it will look in the indexes and find whatever data is matching based on the index you are searching in. So either you are searching in, for example, one index or you are searching in multiple indexes in order to find data that you are looking for. So Splunk will help you filter all the garbage away, which is not interesting based on what you are looking for, and then it will present you with relevant stuff. And you can of course also set Splunk up to act and do stuff based on what data is coming in so that you don't have to search manually to find something because for example if you have a lot of errors in your backend you want it to have you want to have a trigger when a lot of occurrences is coming from your backend saying that this job is failing this job is failing instead of waiting for one of your employees or yourself to type in a search query and see oh we have a lot of errors and they, this has been gone on for 10 days so you want to have some triggers that act based on what data is being passed and indexed in your Splunk setup. So now that we have seen the parts of Splunk, we'll be going on to setting up our Splunk environment. And when you're planning your environment, you need to take into consideration if you have a unusual setup, are there some particular things that you need to be aware of? You also need to be aware of what operation system you're using. Is it Windows? Is it Linux? And when you are playing around with Splunk, you should try to match such that your test and practice environment is also the environment that you will work on in production. Because then you will get more, more familiar with how Splunk works in this particular environment such that you are not training on windows and how to use it and install it and set it all up on windows and then when you move into production you will be using linux because then you will meet some challenges that were not present on windows and vice versa so in this course we'll be using linux so let's head over and get started with setting up our splunk environment so i'm now over in my virtual box kali linux where i'm going to install splunk if you're unfamiliar with VirtualBox and how to install Kali Linux, I will be linking to a video from my channel in the top right corner here where you can see how to set up this Kali Linux distribution in a VirtualBox. And basically when you get into the virtual machine, all you need to do is open a web browser and then navigate to 
for example this page right here I'll be linking to this in the comment because this will show you a guide of the commands that you need to execute to install Splunk you can also just go to the site we visited earlier splunk.com and then find the product that you want a free version of you'll be using enterprise and for example if you click here you will see you need to sign up to be able to download it so we'll just follow this tutorial right here where we can have the commands and install without signing up so we will be copying this right here this command then we'll head over to our terminal and we have it here so let me just zoom in a bit or oh, let me use this terminal here instead yeah that is zoomed so we'll just be pasting this in and then we'll be downloading our Splunk distribution and while this is being downloaded let's head back to this and then we see here once you have run this command and the download has completed then run the following command where we are unpacking this so we'll just be copying oh, this right here and head back and let's see if this will finish soon And now we have it and if we do uh, ls to list what we have in the current directory we see that we have our installation uh, dipped here so let's paste this in and then we need the sudo password for this Kali distribution and we we'll just enter this can't access no such file and let's see and that is because what we have here does not match this version here so let's just say instead of this and then we will be copying the name here and then we will do delete this part and paste in the name Oh, did we? Yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> we just copied in the same part. So let's not do that again. Let's do it like so. And say copy. Delete this. And say paste. And now that we have chose the right name, which is the version that we installed, because this installation version were two uh, version numbers higher than the one that the example on the website used. So while this is unpacking, we'll go in here and see what the next step is. So the next step is to use this sudo of Splunk bin Splunk start, because we need to start off Splunk. So we'll be copying this. And if you read further here, then it says this will pump you with the Splunk license, and we can use the space. Just scroll through it, and why for saying yes to accept the agreement, and then we should be able to open up uh, the Splunk in our web browser using a local endpoint. So let's head back, and it is complete. So let's paste in this. And we'll just use space. And yes. So now we just need to enter a new admin password. So we will just type what we want. Oh, the complexity requirement. So we'll just choose another one. Let's see, start here.
So now that we chose a password that complied with the complexity that is required, a total printable AC characters, we should be able to navigate to this page. So let's just copy this. And let's see. And then we have a username and that will be admin and the password that you chose. And welcome to Splunk. So now we have yeah, skip Splunk installed on our virtual machine and we are ready to get on with the next lecture. So see you next time here on Winslow Academy.